As a young boy, I was fascinated with Irish travellers as we drove past their roadside camps. I think I envied their freedom. So when Traveller Visibility Group said some men from Spring Lane site were interested in being filmed, I jumped at the chance to live my childhood dreams and experience at first hand the Traveller lifestyle. Irish travellers or pavies have been a distinct ethnic nomadic people in Ireland for at least a millennium, with their lifestyle, values and traditions. Travellers feel strongly that they are an ethnic minority group with their own identity and culture, which includes their own language and customs. Travellers believe you are born a traveller and can't just decide to become one. Travellers place a huge importance on the family. Their own language is called Gammon, Kant or Shilta. One of the most recognisable elements of the traveller lifestyle is the prevalence of horse culture. From my first days filming on Spring Lane, I can see the energy, the passion, the time that the men are putting into their horses. It's something they love. And what does uh, having a horse mean to you? Like, what does? Oh, well, it means everything to me. Like, it has to. Like, I would wear the horses to the child, like, and yeah, like horses. My man likes horses. Yeah, they like, kiss me up in trouble. I don't drink, I don't smoke, like. I just stick to my half of life. They're my pastime, like, and they're my life, and that's what I love, like, they're my half of life, and I would never give up. Traveller boys and men really engage with horses. It's probably one of the most positive elements in their day-to-day -day living. Well, for starters, it's proven that contact with the horse is positively mood-altering. That's the first thing. Um, but second of all, it helps on loads of things like um, leadership skills, um, interpersonal skills, interrelationship skills. Um, it's huge in um, preventing young people from getting into drugs and crime and um, it's, it's helpful for rehabilitation from drugs and, and um, alcohol as well. Um, and also just to give people a sense of purpose, maybe who don't have a whole lot else going on in their lives. And the horse is uh, something that they can focus on and care for. I'm in a Mrs. Paddy. I'm called Pecker Gun. My triad is all for all, one for one. I walk the roads, but I never run. I'm the last of the traveling people. With me banjo and fiddle, I yarn in a song. I'll sing to all people who do me no wrong. But if others despise me, I'll just move along. And now I'll find friends in the morning. Our money is money, and friends they are friends. 
To many people, travelers' ways may seem out of step with modern living. While filming, I met Richard, who showed me how participating in horse culture can benefit a young man. Richard's day-to-day -day living is based around a horse. It's his life, it's his passion, it's his only pastime. Take his mind every penny he's had. Go tell him. Take a picture of him. Get out of the house and I'll show the pony. This is your pony, is it? I've just pony in a couple of weeks, a couple of months already. He's only a skin. He's after winning a couple of races already with me and a few drives all around here. Like he looked what to do with a free man now. In a house box on the way home. <laughs> Watching Richard's brother shoe a horse made me think how city folk like myself often overlook the varied amount of skills and time needed to keep large bloodstocks such as a horse. Farriering is a whole trade by itself. Richard is picking up these skills just by watching for the moment. But everyone has their part to play. Richard test drives the horse to show that the shoes are fitting well. Let's go through an average day of Richard's. After breakfast, he'll go and get his horse. He'll wash it before he takes the horse out. There is a big pride in your horse, so you have to have it looking good before you take it out, Richard tells me. Is that your horse now, is it? Yeah, that's my horse. And are you, are you going to be racing on Patrick's Day? Or? Oh, yeah. One as well, so like all young adults, Richard can be a live wire, but when he's trotting with his horse, you can see his focus, he's in his element. It's great to see a young man with such a great hobby. Then the horse has to have its harness put on. Then, the joy of the open road.
Articulated trucks parked on the wrong side of the road are only one of the many issues that trotters have to come up against. There's more to keeping a horse than just trotting. When Richard comes home, he has to wash down the horse, as he explained to me that the horse's legs are like the pistons in a sports car and have to be cooled down afterwards to keep them in good condition. but Richard is still picking up new skills with horses. Here we see Richard showing a horse skill passed to him by his brother, and his brother from his father, and his father from his grandfather. But as Richard matures into a young man, his passion for horses seems to get greater. As he grows in size, he also grows in responsibility for his horses. It's not all road and trotting. There's dirty work to be done as well. And no better boy than Richard to pitch in and help. He doesn't shy away from hard work. The big horse fair for the men of Spring Lane is Karami. Karami Horse Fair is held on the 12th of July every year in the town of Buttervent, County Cork. It is one of the oldest horse fairs in Ireland and is reputed to date back to the time of Brian Baru. I don't know what to expect going into the fair. On getting downtown, the men of Spring Lane were meeting up and chatting with old friends. As I wander around, I see that there is more to the fair than just horses. There's pieces of tackle to be picked up and maybe a stud horse to be seen, clothes to be bought and pieces of equipment that you can't get in the city, like items needed for country living. What's the story, Rich? I caught a glimpse of Richard running around with his friends. No doubt he's meeting up with girls and other friends from around the country. At first I thought it was unusual to see farmers and travellers mixing in the same place. But they mix well. We forget that travellers in the past were rural dwellers. Also, I noticed how similar the farmer and the traveller were, and how they both had a love of the horse which brought them to the fair. As a traveller, like, do you think it's going to be, you know, does it bring a certain history to your family? Oh, like? I don't think should be all of it. Well, I, I really am in between, really, because I work for farmers all my life. And I was away, I was away the early age since I was eight years, I was eight years away, you know, in school like, and up the next day. And uh, I uh, kind of in between, I work for farmers on my life then. And uh, I went a bit of travelling, I'm not much like, but a bit of it like, you know. Uh, but I was mostly working with farmers and worked hard like. And, but uh, but travellers often work with farmers, are you? They do, back, going we, used back to, to the we used to pull the beat that time, like, pull the beat, you know, when you pull in, you pull the beat, pick the spuds and... 
do all the jobs like you could, pigs and sheep and everything. And I'm into all that and I go to shows and everything, like with cattle and everything. And, everything. and then with mechanisation, there was, there was less need for the traveller boys and the men and to yes. be working then, like so. Oh, they were dig and then they were feeding. Well, I'd bring most of the family with me when I go to a place. And they'll feed them up and fatten them up, you know. I fatten them up, then I, if, I want get it in the, if I want to get it in money, you see, I get it off of the table. See, and I'll bring a few spuds with me, then Brain, they'll give you a few spuds and stop a hair, maybe I'll put some money down. Yes. <laughs> At the fair, travellers and farmers mix very well. In the past, they used work hand in hand. Rural life seemed much more integrated than it is today. In today's modern urban setting, travellers and their horses face many more obstacles. As Chrissy O'Sullivan of Traveller Visibility Group advocates for the fundamental importance of traveller horse ownership. But somewhere deep within me, I suppose within my traveller DNA, within the traveller psychic, there was a desire and a need to encourage my children to be involved with horses and horse ownership and to encourage, and to encourage travellers in relation to horse ownership. And I suppose, you know, many of you that are out there this morning, I said to people, would say, oh, that would be great. I'd love for my children to be involved with horses. I'd love for children to own horses if I could own them or if I could afford them. But there's something very different between travel ownership of horses and settle ownership of horses, or, the, or that desire. Travel ownership of horses is the last, most tangible thing left of our nomadic way of life. And for many of us, it's a birthright. The foundation of that ownership has been set before we were even born. Our fathers and our fathers before us, before them, were horse owners. And sometimes that was out of necessity. We needed them horses to get from A to B. We needed them horses, as Neil says, you know, in terms of an economic way of life, in terms of very survival. There was that necessity in the beginning. And many of you could say this morning, you know, well, that was in your father's time, your mother's time. That's not your time. But it's incumbent on us that are here now to support travel ownership as something, in, as sometimes in a community that feels like we're under siege. We've lost so much. For me, the whole issue of horse ownership should never have been a negative thing. And unfortunately, because of media betrayal, because of neglect of horses, it has become it's sometimes a negative thing. And that's something that the challenge is there for us today and for the next generation to turn that around. Because, as I said, we as travellers feel that it's fundamentally important to us. It's fundamental and that it is very symbolic to our heritage and our culture. I suppose, in terms of the traveller identity, it is really crucial, you know, you see something that is tangible, and for us it's ours. Every St. Patrick's Day, the men and boys of Spring Lane go out for a big trot. This year, the trot was going to be out the straight road. Leading up to the big day, all the talk is about the trot. For me, looking from the outside, I see that this trot is the traveller's way of adapting to the loss of their nomadic ways. On the road, there's a great sense of community, a friendly rivalry, but it's not very competitive.
is kind of like it's it's a part of the family. It's kind of like um, it's a calmness. It's it's um, kind of like it, it's it, it's a big animal and it's it, it's so uh, obedient in in many respects. But it has its own um, kind of aura about him. And and when you put him in, in a cart and you're just going nice and slowly down down the road and you're looking and you know and, and you can see everything you know you can even pick up the flowers and things like that but when you're in a car you're just flashing by everything goes by so quickly you don't know, notice the countryside you don't notice the wildlife and it just gives you that sense of freedom the, the freedom of actually you know of, of being under the elements at any time of day or even in the evening you know the early evening is really nice to go down and listening to the birds settling in the bushes and and things like that but that horse to me is uh you know it represents every it represents me it represents my father it represents my grandfather it just brings back all them wonderful memories to me of my childhood and you know and, and them things my father have told me about his childhood and that, that's what the horse is it's it's such a soul it brings out it brings out the inner soul of you and it gives you that kind of wind down time you know and when you go and call the horse and he comes to you and he's a big massive animal but he's so obedient and but he's also got a brain of his own and he and he knows how to manipulate you and, and kind of like you become one and it, he's, he knows you and you know him that's that's the important of a horse to me and, and, and my family you know my children and my children love love him and you know, I've got an epileptic child that, you know, he's never been broke into ride, yet he lets my epileptic child, my grandchild, to, to sit on his back, and he's such a wonderful animal. You know what I mean? He's, he's so peaceful in himself. And, and because he's peaceful, he brings peace on everyone else around him. Just seeing all the sulkies in the middle of a field with all the harness and tackle left around. Men standing around chatting in groups and lads messing around on horseback. This could have been set over a hundred years ago. It seems timeless. It is the simple pleasure of keeping and trotting horses that brings these men such joy and contentment. It's days like these that you forget all the hassle and trouble that keeping horses in an urban environment brings. <laughs> 